Hi guys, it's James here at Full Fat 4x4 and today I have jumped on the I bought the cheapest L322 in the UK bandwagon. So stay with me to find out more. Is this car a good one or is it an absolute pile of rubbish? Stay tuned to find out. Okay, so this is it. This is a 3.6 TD V8 L322 Range Rover. It's got 117,000 miles on the clock. Um, and I think it's got to have been one of the cheapest Range Rovers out there. Um, so I would actually like you to have a guess in the comments below how much I paid for this car. Um, and as we sort of go through this little mini series, I will reveal and start talking about some of the costs associated with this. Um, however, what I will just say, uh, and this might sort of guide some of your thinking in terms of how much it cost, um, I had this car delivered to me, sight unseen, um, by a company I use to pick up and move cars. Um, um, between the point that it was loaded onto the trailer and the point where it landed on my driveway, uh, it managed to lose all of its brake fluid. So basically jumped in whilst it was on the trailer, pumped the brakes a couple of times and it split the hoses and they were totally rusted through. Um, so before even sort of starting on this series, um, I ran it straight down to the local garage um, and just said, right, whatever's wrong with the brakes uh, in terms of brake lines, just sort it um, so that I at least have, you know, a reasonable set of brakes to run with. Uh, then when I went to go and pick it up, it was um, it was flat. Um, so I don't know if it's actually going to start now. So let's find out. OK, well, we've got auxiliary ignition, which is positive. Um, yeah, it's warm in here. A uh, hundred and... 17,000 miles and it is overdue in oil service. Right, is it going to fire up? No. Okay. Well, that's kind of unsurprising. It was kind of marginal when I went to go and pick it up. Um, I've had it on charge overnight, but uh, when I came back to it, the charger was basically saying um, that the battery wasn't taking a charge. So I've got a new battery. I'm going to stick that on and then once that on, we'll return. I'll get it fired up and I'll share my thoughts on it. Okay, so half an hour later and we've got a brand new Exceed battery on. Um, so those are the ones with 100 amp hours and 900 amps of cranking juice. So it's more than ample for the Range Rover's needs. And I'm really hoping that this is just going to fire straight up now. Um, and that will be the end of our kind of electrical problems and, you know, starting bits and pieces. So fingers crossed. Right, glow light is out, foot on brake. Excellent. Okay, good. That is good news. We do need some diesel, but uh, I think what we're going to do is just go for a quick drive. Okay, so I bought this car with no service history. Um, and since I have just put a new battery on, the glove box switch has started to work, which is, um, which is a bonus. And there is actually some service history in there, which is really good news. Um, it's not, I don't think it's a full service, but there's some stuff in this folder. So I'll go through all of that in a bit later, but I've not actually really driven this. So I'm quite sort of desperate to have a go because normally it's sort of 4.4s that I go in for. So hold on, let me just get my, get my admin set up. But yeah, I am actually very pleased that it's just sort of fired up. All right, let's get this microphone sorted. Come on. Okay, so we'll get that on the seatbelt in drive, handbrake off, get some lights on, good. I wonder if the aircon works. That would be a bonus, it's a bit warm in here. Okay. So, what can I tell you about this car? Well, first of all, I think I'm just going to address why did I buy it? So, I have sold a couple of 4.4s over the last few years. Um, most of them have been sort of, you know, 10 grand or so, uh, a bit more you know, in some instances. And I've sold a lot of them and then thought to myself, actually, you know what, I really would have liked to have kept that one. However, because I have a company car and my wife has a company car, I've never really been able to justify 
keeping such an expensive car as a third car. So my logic was, well, I'll buy something really cheap uh, and I will just sort of roll around in it over the winter because um, it's, you know, it is quite handy. We do live in the countryside. It is handy to have a four by four. We had some quite bad flooding uh, a few weeks ago uh, and, you know, like proper flooding. So, you know, large, you know, not just sort of like little puddles on the road, but actual big floods on the road, which you, we, we wouldn't have been able to get through in either of our cars. So we did sort of think, well, actually, it might make sense just to have a really cheap 4x4 to knock around in. So that's kind of why I bought this. But, you know, it's like a lot of these things, um, circumstance. So I was messaging the bloke about this car on Facebook Marketplace. He told me it was sold. And then about two weeks later, it was still available. But by that point, I would bought the Blue Westminster, which you saw on the driveway uh, in the previous video on my plan was well I'll keep a run around in that one anyway long story short this one then became available I think his sale fell through so I thought well you know sod it I'll buy that and I'll sell the Westminster and keep this one to, to just knock about in so the question is am I going to join the raft of other youtubers out there who've bought cheap cars uh, and then basically just sort of go through the litany of disasters and chaos um, that they cause them financially. And I think, the, well, I don't know, it's a bit of a toss up. Will I, I, I kind of suspect that this car is a little bit of a diamond in the rough. And the reason I say that is when I did my HPI checks, I use motor check uh, for those. Uh, it's had four keepers. The first one was for, I think, three years, then five years, then seven years. And it was only the last keeper who had it for just one year. Um, and I suspect that maybe the maintenance has kind of faded a little bit towards the, you know, in that last year. Um, because I actually think this drives really nicely. And when I ran it down to the forge garage at the bottom of the village to do the brake pipes, the mechanic there, Elmo, had a good look underneath it for me and said, you know what, actually, it's a fairly solid car. Um, and when I was buying it, bearing in mind this was bought sight unseen and I was going off some ropey pictures on Facebook, there was a couple of things that stood out to me. Uh, and the primary one was that it was on four premium tyres, so two Pirellis on the back and two Bridgestones on the front. Now, it's not always a given, but generally people who are looking after their cars don't put rubbish tyres on. They tend to go for premiums. So that was a kind of green flag tick. Uh, and the other thing was the duration of the keepers prior to this last one. So, oh, and also in the pictures, I could see that there wasn't any rust on the rear tailgate or the rear arches, which is a big green flag because they're the sort of the main places where, um, where these rust along with the subframes. So that was kind of my thought process behind buying it. Now, it does need some things doing to it. As I, you know, I kind of mentioned, as soon as I got it on the driveway, it just let go of all of its brake fluid, which was quite amusing uh, in a sort of macabre sort of sense. So that's now been done. Although when it was at the garage, the guy said it needs the rear flexies. Uh, they were on back order. I wanted to get it back to do a few other jobs. So it will be going back for rear flexies. And then what's on my list of things to do is track control arms because there's a bit of a knock on braking. You might be able to hear that, I don't know. Uh, so track control arms, it's kind of just standard across like pretty much every 4.4, every L322 I get in these track control arms, it would seem. So we'll get those done. The guys at the forge also said that there was a, a track rod end that is that has play in it, so we'll get that done. Uh, then it's going to be full engine service, gearbox oil and filter, front diff, rear diff, transfer case. So kind of all the standard stuff. Uh, then just on top of that, it was a bit annoying. The rear tailgate doesn't seem to, the actuator doesn't seem to work. So I'm hoping that's just a switch. Uh, so I'll get that changed and go from there. So yeah, I'm actually really impressed with this. I really like how smooth it is. Now, interestingly, the pre-2010 cars were not on adaptive dynamics. So it does mean that they are quite wallowy, wallowy around the corners, but it does make them ever so comfortable. 
and I'm kind of what the immediate impression of I have of this car is it's a bit like going in, you know, stepping into a gentleman's club, uh, you know, and sitting down on one of those sort of big Chesterfields. Uh, it really does feel very comfy, you, you know, without the adaptive dynamics of the later uh, facelift models, you know, you really can feel the air suspension nice and soft and squidgy. So, you know, a very sort of comfortable touring bus. Um, I think, it, you know, there's a lot of debate about whether or not we do 4.4 or 3.6 um, in terms of, you know, engine. I think it's sort of widely accepted that the 4.4 is a better engine. Um, but I do think if you're buying a car without adapt adaptive dynamics, it could be more comfortable. So yeah, I, overall really impressed with how this is driving. Uh, and as I say, I'd like you guys to have a little guess uh, as to how much you think I bought it for um, before I sort of do a full breakdown in terms of what I spend on it and all that other good stuff. So yeah. Uh, give me a comment below, let me know what your thoughts are, how much do you think I paid for this, um, and if you have any experience of the 3.6, I would also be really keen to learn about that in the comments below. So that is a quick drive of it. Now that it's back on the driveway, I'm going to do a little walk around with you guys and just show you kind of the condition of it. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that little drive. So I'm just gonna quickly walk through the bodywork and kind of show show it to you and share my thoughts on it. So um, we'll start with the tires, as I kind of mentioned on the um, video, I was kind of drawn to the fact that it had four premium tires on it. Um, so we've got a Bridgestone up front, um, which I think is a 2021 tire, plenty of tread on that one. Um, then we have a Scorpion on the back right and also the back left, they're both 2020s. Um, and then it was just the front left, which although is a Scorpion, um, looks like it has worn poorly. Um, so we'll bin that off and I, I suspect that's probably associated with that track rod end that the text down the road um, mentioned, so we'll certainly address that. Um, I'm kind of in two minds about what to do with this car really. I could sort of get it ready and sell it, um, but equally I do really want to sort of do a bit of playing myself. Um, and in terms of bodywork, I mean, for an 07 car, I think this is in really good condition. Um, you know, there are some there are some marks in the paint, but I suspect that um, using some uh, bug and tar remover and also the sort of sap products that you can get from some detailing companies should sort of sort most of that out. But it really is very straight. The only thing I'm not particularly enamoured about is these chrome wing mirror covers, which I just, I detest chrome. So I'm hoping I might be able to source some body coded wing mirror covers for it, uh, which would be, which would be really nice. And in terms of interior, it's actually in really good condition. So it's grubby. It's really grubby. I don't think it's had a proper clean in some time, but it's, you know, oh, and the <laughs> headlining's a little bit sacky. Um, so I might see what we can do about that. But, you know, that's an old car issue. But the, the leather is in really good nick, as are the door cards. I'm a bit of a sucker for a parchment interior. Parchment with, uh, you know, navy blue exterior is, is definitely my bag. You can keep your greens, you know, I think they're for, they're for replicating Clarkson and the Queen. I'm, I'm definitely a blue boy. Uh, and again, one of the other things that I was sort of drawn to is the condition of the rear arches. So, I mean, I've seen 4.4s from 2011 with worse arches than this. So quite impressive for an 07 car. Uh, and then with respect to the tailgate, again, there's just like no rust on it. It's brilliant. I've had worse cars, again, from, you know, 2010, 2012. The, I had one 2012 Westminster that was in Baltic blue. And, you know, it was a real shame that the uh, tailgate had kind of had really started to rust, which was a shame. Um, this lower tailgate is not opening on the button. I'm hoping it just needs a new button because it does, uh, it does open when you actuate the manual actuator. So there you go, top tip. If your tailgate gets stuck, there are some, you know, you just, there you go. There's some flippy switches there. Uh, are these ones, which you can use to manually open the... Um, lower tailgate. It's got this funky tool chest in, so we'll have a look at that at another point. I don't know where the keys are. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I might sell that or just stick some tools in it. Looks quite handy. 
Um, but yeah, bodywork looks really good. The only sort of, the main sort of issue that definitely needs fixing sharpish is this uh, light. And I suspect that because of that light, there is a uh, moisture pathway into the back because there's just a bit of damp down here, but it, I don't think it's set in. So hopefully we'll just catch that at the right time. What else can I talk to you about? I mean, I'm just really impressed with it for for such a cheap car, and I will I will reveal how much um, I paid for it. Um, but I do want to I do want you guys to have a guess. Um, I, I am stunningly impressed, and especially with how nicely it drives. So yeah, that's the car. There's going to be some more content about this 3.6 coming soon, and I will also um, walk you through all the prep that I do to it. As I kind of mentioned, we've already done brake lines and it's going to have its flexi hoses sorted. I've just put a new BRAT battery in, which I think has probably solved a couple of niggles with um, the glove box and all that kind of good stuff. So yeah, stay tuned. Uh, it'll be quite interesting to see if this turns into a disaster channel, um, which I know, you know a lot of other YouTubers do. They do that on purpose. They buy really ropey cars. Uh, to create content and um, I actually I really hope that, that that isn't the case I hope that after I do the sort of initial prep uh, I do get some some trouble for use out of this which would be which would be really nice so yeah once I've kind of got this to where I want it to be I will do a 4.4 versus 3.6 shootout I know that um, another channel has already done one but I don't think they have the two cars side by side which is what I'm going to try and do so yeah, that's it for now guys. Stay tuned for more 3.6 content. Cheers, bye.